Hey Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into Philadelphia Eagles Now. And today, let's go ahead and give you guys the latest Eagles news and rumors. There is a lot going on in the city of Philadelphia. Training camp is coming. People are being signed. And we're going to break it down all for you guys here today. We'll start with the news you probably saw roll in yesterday. And that is all 10 of the Eagles rookies are signed. Now, this and any other year would not be a big deal because, of course, all the rookies will sign their contracts. But with coronavirus, there were a lot of question marks in terms of will rookies get signed? Will they get to training camp on time? And Philadelphia, good to go. All 10 have been signed, and a lot of them came in yesterday. Really the deadline to get stuff done because training camp starts officially for all rookies on July 21st, which is today, the day of filming. This is huge to get this deal done, right? Rookies got to get to work. They got to get on the football field and learn quickly because they've missed out on a lot of OTAs and offseason activities because, of course, the pandemic. So here, of course, are the rookies. They're all signed, going from pick one all the way to pick 10. Jalen Rager, Jalen Hurts, Davion Taylor, Kayvon Walls, and Jack Driscoll. Also shown there, obviously, are John Hightower who uh, signed a little bit earlier. Sean Bradley and Quez Watkins, who signed earlier as well. Prince Tega Winogo, the first Eagles rookie to sign. And, of course, Casey Tuhill, the final draft pick of Philadelphia. Now, again, no nothing special in terms of all the rookie contracts. They all look normal. They all look good. I'll go ahead and show you the rookie contract breakdown for Jalen Rager just so you get a picture of what a first-round draft pick signs for at number 21 overall. He's going to make about $2.4 million in 2020, and that will go up each year, 3.0, 3.6, com accumulating with 4.0. 2.22 in 2023. He does include a fifth year option as most rookies do. It's going to be right around year four whenever you sign that contract extension. So everything's normal here. But again, I don't want to just glance over the idea of, oh, yeah, they signed. It's like, whatever, the Eagles were going to sign them anyway. No, that was not the case. There's a very real possibility there will be some rookies in the NFL who are not signed starting July 21st, starting today, or even up to this week, who will not report to camp. And each day you miss is a big deal for rookies, especially not only this year, but every single year. But this year especially because, of course, you did not have any OTAs or mini camps and what you normally would do in a normal offseason program in the National Football League. So good news for Philadelphia. Hats off to them. They got all the deals done. No drama. They will have all their rookies report to training camp. They're probably already there at the time you're watching this video and getting better to hopefully have an impact for Philadelphia this season. All right, pin comment time down below. Answer this one for me. Which rookie will have the biggest impact in 2020? It's not as easy as you think, right? Hurts. Could it also be uh, potentially Jalen Rager? Could it be Kayvon Wallace? Jack Driscoll? Who has the biggest impact of the rookies in 2020 for Philadelphia? Answer the pin comment for me down below. Look. All right, more news, and this is, of course, the big news coming into not just the Eagles, but the entire National Football League, but it affects the Eagles, so we talk about it. Zero preseason games. This is happening, right? There will be no preseason games in 2020 at all, it seems, and I'm telling you, and I'll explain this, this is not good, and this is not good for the, the players, even though the players are the ones pushing for this. I'll explain in a second. So, the NFL and the NFLPA are trying to get those final proposals done, that way people are safe whenever they come back to training camp, whether they're rookies today, quarterbacks of the 23rd, and of course the veterans on the 28th. We know the proposals have been going back and forth, but the most recent proposal by the National Football League included zero preseason games. It went from four to two, and now we're down to zero. Because they're saying no preseason games create more acclimation time for players to go ahead and get back into football shape. Now, that's all That's all fine and dandy, but when we talk about acclimation time, it's not just running wind sprints and getting your lungs underneath you. you got to almost remember how to take a hit and get your body ready to take a hit. And just doing that in practice is not the same as doing it for real in a preseason game. Players need preseason games. Now, of course, we'll go back to Ian Rappaport on Good Morning Football today when he said this, quote, the NFL offered the NFLPA zero preseason games as a part of no negotiations, which means they have that's how many there will be. Goodbye preseason games, at least for 2020. So, again, from a 5,000-foot view way above, you go, Thomas, this is not a big deal. I could, I could care less about the Colts preseason game on Indy or the Jets preseason game, the Week 3 one. This does not matter to me as a fan, and it doesn't matter to the starters at the same time. I disagree in terms of the fan perspective, one, because a lot of people who can't afford a regular season ticket normally would go to a preseason game. Now, it doesn't matter this year because of coronavirus, but if we're going to go this way in the future, that does provide a big impact overall. Number two, this does matter for starters because starters do play a lot in the third and fourth preseason game because they're trying to get the dress rehearsal and prepare to actually play starting week one. This also affects a lot of the rookies. It affects a lot of the backups and a lot of the guys trying to make the roster because the only time you're putting tape on the field against an opponent not named your Eagles defense or offense is in the preseason games. I get it, right? 
I see why they're deciding to, to go ahead and let this go because, you know, they don't want what people are concerned about it and they have always wanted less preseason games. But I think two preseason games was honestly the sweet spot. That way you get some rookies some playing time and the and, and the veterans can get acclimated to being hit by an opposing player who's not letting up because he is on your team. I think this is a mistake. I think Ray might see more injured players, even though this is trying to mitigate the amount of injuries. But I think week one, week two, week three are going to be some rough football out there because of injuries and players not being ready to go just because because, again, preseason does matter for a lot of the guys out there, despite what the media is trying to tell you. As you know, of course, your key return dates, as we talked about, the rookies were today, July 21st. Quarterbacks and injured players, July 23rd. Veterans on the 28th. And now, the first actual game the Eagles will play will be the week one opener against the Washington, I guess, currently Redskins, but soon to be changed name on September 13th. So, is this awful news, right? Is this the end of the world? There's no preseason games? No. And of course, I'll see plenty of comments saying, Thomas, you know, preseason is super dumb. It doesn't matter. I don't even watch. That's fine. But I'm telling you, the players, I think, are making a mistake here by not at least going out and hitting different teams at least twice in the preseason to go ahead and get acclimated to what is a very physically demanding sport in football, and the body takes time to get ready for it. But this is what it's going to be. No preseason games, and of course, that means no Eagle preseason games, but... More time to go ahead and study and learn in training camp, I guess. So we'll see. It's an interesting little bit of news. I wanted to get that to you guys here today. Give me a like right now on this video, though, if you're excited about the season still starting, right? I mean, I guess it could be worse, right? There could be no season happening, not just no preseason, but no season. And it looks like the NFL has gotten their act together and they will get the season started here. So drop a like here if you guys are excited for the NFL season. Also, those Eagle phone cases, you guys are telling me on Twitter, you're DMing me that the phone cases are awesome and selling like hotcakes. Well, guess what? They are still out there. And the link, of course, is down below in the description box, chatsports.com slash Eagles case, like phone case, Eagles case. They're all there. The majority of them are either on sale or at least will fit your exact iPhone or Samsung Galaxy phone that you have right now. So the iPhone cases work from an iPhone 7 all the way to an iPhone 11. So like four generations ago to the current generation iPhone 11. And the same goes for Samsung Galaxy ones. They have the Galaxy. Galaxy line, the Galaxy Slim. They have a lot of the main Galaxy devices as well. You can get the football logo with, of course, the pigskin on the back. My favorite is the Midnight Green with the stripe and the Eagles logo. But you can also get the clear case with the Eagles logo and the you know the Eagles in the background as well. It's all there, right? Just go down below, description box, link to chatsports.com slash Eagles case, and check out the iPhone and Samsung Galaxy cases as well. That way you can protect your phone and rep the Eagles <coughs> excuse me, at the same time. Okay, final bit of news here for the Eagles on today's Eagles uh, Now video. Pro Football Focus ranks a lot of players. They rank a lot of uh, position groups, quarterback, wide receiver, defensive line. And, of course, they do this during the offseason because it's the offseason, not a lot to talk about. But they went ahead and ranked all 32 teams' defensive line units and Philadelphia was very, very high, exactly where I've been telling you they should be. They are in the top five, which is not a surprise, but it's still interesting to go ahead and break down overall. Pro Football Focus, again, does a great job ranking these things, and I think they did a fantastic job in their D-line rankings, and Philadelphia was right there at almost to the very top. Now, before I show you the top five, be sure to subscribe here because, of course, if you were going to rank the top Eagles channels, I'd say we're number one right now. We're growing more and more each and every day. Over 12,000 subs here on Philadelphia Eagles now, or at least approaching 12,000 subs. We're trying to get to 15,000 subs by the start of the NFL season. So if you want to be a part of my opinion, the best Eagles channel on YouTube, go ahead and click that big red subscribe button down below. You can also click the notification bell because I'm telling you, preseason is here, or I should say training camp is here, and there'll be a lot of news happening over the coming days and weeks in terms of what the Eagles are doing, maybe trades, maybe signings, who looks good, who looks bad. We'll cover it all here almost every single day on Philadelphia Eagles now, so subscribe down below. The way you guys can be notified and, of course, be subscribed to the channel. So, here is the Pro Football Focus top five D-line ranking. They had the Steelers at one, the Eagles at two, the Redskins there at number three, the 49ers at four, and the Packers at five. This is this is pretty accurate in terms of what everyone was expecting. It's interesting and crazy that the Steelers lose Javon Hargrave to Philadelphia and are still the best defensive line in the National Football League, but... Eh, T.J. Watt guy's pretty good overall, right? He's probably going to be one of the better pass rushers in the NFL. But Philadelphia is the focus. They're there at number two, and I think it's it, it's very appropriate in terms of being number two because they're stacked on the defensive line side, and they're going to be getting after people. Probably going to be the, one of the best uh, uh, pass 
or I, I excuse me, they're going to be one of the best run defenses in the NFL, and I think we'll have a lot of sacks at the same time. Pro Football Focus said this by the Eagles defensive line, saying, quote, but if the Eagles have one of the strongest defensive lines in football for years, uh, not just blessed with top-end talent, but with incredible depth. That doesn't look likely to change anytime soon. They've added multiple pieces over this past season. Now, obviously, the depth chart, as you see it right now, very, very good on the inside. Cox, Hargrave, Malik Jackson, a little weaker on the outside, but... If Josh Sweat and Jannard Avery can go ahead and step up there as the backup rotational defensive ends, Philadelphia can maybe even move up to number one on this list after the 2020 season. So it's always fun whenever the Eagles, I think, are ranked properly and get the recognition that they deserve by big national media outlets like Pro Football Focus. Do they need to be number one right now? Does it matter where they're ranked? No, but I think in terms of showing what Philadelphia has done over the past couple of years and really the past decade focusing on the defensive line, it's good to see that, one, it's paying off, and two, it should go ahead and attribute to hope hopefully more sacks, better uh, run stopping, and hopefully more wins for Philadelphia going into the 2020 season. So again, rank number two, they're behind the Steelers. Let's see what the Redskins do. It's going to be interesting. But rank number two, I think, is very good for Philadelphia and means that they're poised for a great year and probably a great fantasy year as well. I'd draft them if you're here in your fantasy league. But, you know, you can do whatever you want. It's your fantasy league overall. Okay, so that's all the time we have for today on Philadelphia Eagles now. I wanted to break down the Eagles rookie signing. That is big news. That's a big deal to get that done. They're probably all there getting tested right now now, and they're going to start training and practicing and getting ready to go in the coming days and weeks. It is interesting, no preseason games. People think that's a good thing. I don't think it's a good thing. I think players need to get acclimated to being hit. Maybe they do more uh, during their normal training camp days, one-on-one -on -one in practice, but we'll have to wait and see. And finally, pro football focus. Of course, ranking the Eagles one of the best defensive lines. What a surprise there. I am shocked, except for not really, because I've been telling you guys that for days and days and days. There you go, though. All time we have for today here on Philadelphia Eagles Now. I am your host and your fearless leader, Thomas Mott. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe, and I'll go ahead and sign off. See you guys.